chocolate isn't the answer. Could you repeat the question? Hello, I'm Pat Coakley, and welcome to Podsnack's Art of the Diet, the weekly podcast that each week tries to ask the right question about how to maintain a significant weight loss. You can access all the episodes on www.artofthediet.com. Hello, it's Pat Coakley, and it's episode 143 of Podsnacks, artofthediet.com. And today, I don't know, this was one of the first days in years, literally, where I thought, I, I'm just going to have to skip this week's podcast. I just felt like I had nothing to bring to the table. I had checked my usual uh, sources for ideas, and none of them seemed to be saying something new or something that particularly engaged me or addressed where I was, you know, feeling this week. And, you know, weight management is just a biatch, okay? (laughs) So we all know that. And even though successful, um, you know, it's a struggle. So I guess I've just been sort of uninspired with myself. And so I had gotten to the point where I even really thought about it. And this was after coffee, because usually I feel that way before coffee. But after coffee, I go, oh, yeah, I, I have this to say and that to say. But then I saw one article about when doctors downplay women's health concerns. And a bell went off in my head, and I said, no, this is a subject I could talk uh, about at least for a few minutes. So that's what I'm going to talk about today and wonder if any of it resonates with you. I believe I referenced, uh, not in great detail, but... Uh, just referenced a recent uh, visit I had had to my primary care physician. But I I think what I did not say is really the, the thing that I've thought about the most since the visit. And that is, and for those of you who may be new to me, you know, I'm 73 years old, so you know, you tend to go to the doctor with a little bit of concern, even if you're feeling fine, okay? And as most of you know, I'm not shy, really. I'm not a reticent. Uh, I don't think most people would want to be in the room with me if they don't want to hear multiple sides of an issue. Uh, So, having said that, I want to share with you what I think happened and have it point to this article, which I will include on the show notes page at www.artofthediet.com slash 143, the numbers 143. Okay, and so as usual, uh, as most is, mostly is the case uh, in healthcare systems, you're first seen by a uh, uh, nurse uh, slash aide to the doctor who takes uh, your vitals and asks you a few questions and included now at least for people my age, are these questions about, are you experiencing hopelessness, feelings of loneliness, and whatnot? And I think that's what I may have referenced before in a previous um, uh, podcast. But what I thought at the time, after she finished and said, well, the doctor will be in a minute, was... I don't think she took my blood pressure. 
which is a normal thing to take. I have normal blood pressure, but I do take a small, you know, um, a medication for it and have for years. But I didn't remember her taking my blood pressure. So I thought, well, I guess he's just going to do it. So at any rate, he came in and we had our conversation. And, um, you know, at the end, as he was going out, he said, well, you know, things look good. Your weight is good. Your blood pressure is good. Da, da, da. And out he went. And as I was gathering my things, I said, I don't remember that he took my blood pressure. And so as I was leaving, I could have said, what was my blood pressure? Just to verify that they had taken it. But I didn't. I left and went, I guess they just forgot to take it. And then I thought to myself, really, what are the odds they forgot to take it? The odds are higher that I forgot they took it, right? But I'm thinking, you know, I don't think I forgot. I don't think they took it. But the the whole bottom line is whether they took it or not, I perceived that they didn't. And I didn't stop at the desk before I left and say, could you just verify what my blood pressure was this visit? Just to affirm that they took it or not. I left. And I have actually thought about that more than once because it indicates that even despite my mouthiness and opinions and whatnot, there's a bit of that passive adapting to things that just simply don't feel right, but you just accept it and go along. And it was such a clear-cut thing. In other words, you know, one of the reasons I have visits in between physical visits is because when you're on high blood pressure medication, they require that you have a six-month uh, check-in. And if, in fact, the high blood pressure wasn't taken, and, in fact, he is saying to me, hey, your blood pressure looks good, um, there's a problem. But I walked out the door not sure and didn't take control of the situation. And I think that that's why this particular article was very interesting to me because uh, I don't think it's an uncommon experience for females to feel like some of their stuff is not taken that seriously and we may be automated uh, in a way in the medical medical care system that we're so used to that we don't really question. So this particular article was a journalist who, you know, was I think a fairly young uh female journalist who has kids and uh, whatnot. And her whole history had been interviewing physicians and psychologists. And so um, she was not unaware of what some signs of uh, depression and anxiety were. And she recounted a visit where uh, to her primary care where this... Uh, physician who was a female, by the way, and also a, a mother as well, um, 
said, well, you look like you're doing great. And this journalist said, and this was after I told her that I was having trouble being with my children and enjoying being with my children and getting done what needed to be done at work and at home and at home. So this woman, the patient, knew that being unable to live one's life was a big red flag signaling it was time to get help. But the doctor was under the impression that she didn't need it. I don't think you're at the point where medication is an option in any way. It can be addictive. Keep exercising and doing yoga and maybe consider meditating and try to get some more sleep. Now, the journalist said she had just told the doctor that those very steps weren't helping and that anxiety was keeping me from falling asleep and getting restful sleep. But, the journalist said she started to interrupt Then the doctor said, if you're still having trouble a few months from now, come back and see me again, okay? And the journalist nodded numbly and said, well, wouldn't she know if I truly was in need of treatment? And I thought, bingo. This is where we get into trouble. And, you know, I had a... a, old friend visit me uh, last week. I hadn't seen her in a while. And we just uh, talked briefly about how doctors uh, rarely deal with uh, weight problems in women in our generation. She's not exactly my age, but similar generations. And she said that a doctor had never, ever addressed her weight issue, although the doctor had addressed her husband's. So I think that's one of the reasons where silence on the part of physicians really confirms that there's a problem, they don't know how to deal with it, and so they're not going to deal with it. And I understand now in the age of... um, the obesity statistics being what they are and more aggressive treatment on the part of physicians with respect to the problem, that a lot of women get treated poorly with respect to this problem. They don't feel like um, it's a problem that they can easily discuss with their physician. But leaving that aside, that particular issue aside, This woman's concern in this article was that she was experiencing a disconnect from her life, did all the usual things like, you know, exercising, yoga, you know, even meditating, and things were not working, and yet this physician just simply didn't see her and hear her properly. Now, on her own, the journalist went to a therapist, and um, it worked. It helped uh, decrease the anxiety and free up some mental space for bigger questions, she said. And then she began to wonder how common, common it was for women to have their health concerns downplayed or dismissed by a physician. And so she went and talked to some um, experts in the field, and it said, she said, she discovered it's a huge issue in medicine that healthcare providers have implicit biases that affect the way women are heard, understood, and treated but that medical schools and professional guidelines are starting to address this problem. But there's still much to be done. And it brings me to a core personal issue that has nothing to do with weight, but has everything to do with um, every other health issue that I have that's um, 
potentially there, which at 73, you've got a lot of potentially serious issues. I feel like I'm doing the health care in my life right at the moment that I don't, I'm not asking the right question of this physician in order to engage him with an answer that addresses uh, my concerns. And I, myself, I'm just apparently deciding that he is going to give me standard issue uh, responses so that I have to make up uh, my mind, <coughs> excuse me, myself, about issues that normally you would think you would discuss with a physician. So this woman in the article gives some examples of how to discuss some of the uh, barriers you might be having to connecting with your physician. My response to this last visit in other feelings of just not being able to discuss realistically uh, some issues was to think of just changing physicians. And I thought, oh, Lord, I, you know what? That's not so easy either. So anyway, she gives you some suggestions, and so I'm just going to um, share them with you. Maybe uh, they will help you uh, think about what the relationship is with, uh, with your physician. And the thing to bear in mind is that it may be hard to speak up if you don't feel like you're being treated fairly. And even uh, female physicians say that they have struggled with this themselves. So there are three steps that she recommends this uh, specialist in how women should um, start advocating for themselves. Three steps to ensure your health concerns are taken seriously. If your doctor recommends something you suspect isn't right, including watch and wait, this doctor suggests asking, what's the basis for this recommendation? Are there guidelines for this? And what do they say? Guidelines tend to be fairly objective and data-driven, so women do better when their doctors follow them. Be direct is the second one. The first one is ask about guidelines. The second one is be direct. If you still feel like you're being dismissed, like for example, before the doctor had closed the door with me the other week, after he had said the blood pressure looks good, I should have simply said, what was my blood pressure? If I didn't want to admit that I didn't remember having the blood pressure taken, or accuse them of not doing this basic thing. I just simply should have asked what it was before he closed that door. So this physician says, if you feel like you're being dismissed, say, I'm concerned and I feel that maybe you aren't hearing me. Help me understand why, don't, why you don't see this as a problem. Any physician can have a bias, but a good physician should also be able to take a step back and say, I hear you, let's talk this through. The third one is check your own bias. As women, we've been taught from an early age to rationalize warning signs of physical or mental health problems. For example, a Yale cardiology study found that many women hesitated to seek help for a heart attack because they worried about being thought of as hypochondriacs. 
Recognize that expressing concern over symptoms doesn't mean you're overreacting, self-diagnosing, or trying to do your healthcare provider's job for them. If you feel like something isn't right with your health, honor that, even if a doctor is just disagreeing with you. It's better to find out you're wrong than to wait too long. And P.S., I have heard uh, some of my friends say that they just insist on getting a female physician. And I see at the end of this article that this woman says there's little evidence to show that female providers offer women more equal care than male providers do. The best doctor is the one who listens to you and views healthcare as a conversation, not a set of orders. So I think uh, for me, the lesson is before I get a new physician, I'm going to start trying to make the conversation that I have with the physician be more direct. I'm going to ask about the guidelines on the certain health issues that I have. And I'm just going to try to reboot this conversation before I give this doctor the boot. All right. So, you know, hopefully this uh, touches on some issue that you may have had. Uh, It maybe doesn't relate directly to weight management, but since health is my overriding why for why I uh, keep... uh, Uh, with the weight maintenance, uh, it's certainly germane to me. And as we all know, this podcast is all about me. All right. So over and out for May 9th. Wow, May 9th. Happy Mother's Day out there. Take your health seriously. And either reboot your relationship with your doctor Or be grateful that you don't know what I'm talking about with any of these issues. Or give your doctor the boot. Take care.